Nuggets. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. It's that show, Newton's Nuggets. Now we're trying something a bit different today. Me and Jesse are in the same room as each other. Ugh. All right. How you doing, mate? Can I go to you? I'm tired. Yeah. I'm really, really tired. It feels like a while since we've told everyone how tired we are. Ladies and gentlemen, we are quite tired. Yeah. I kind of want to do a go to sleep podcast now. <laughs> well, it's interesting. We'll get to that because we should probably review our recent shows and therefore talk about sleep a little bit somewhere. I around. love that idea. So basically, in the last three shows, we've had two gorgeous women and one guy convince us to sleep more. I have no problem with this. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite liking this, Jesse. Right, so what we've been up to for the last three or four weeks uh, since you last had a Born and Jesse show. Three weeks ago, we had a lovely lady called Veronica Hansen come on and she talked to us about how she kind of up sticks and walked away from the rat race and everything that was just going nuts around her life uh, and went for an easier lifestyle, which involved travelling a lot. Um, Jesse, I don't know about you, but she kind of kicked the backside out of some of my thoughts um, and she was really nice about it. Yeah, absolutely. She, I think it's something that we, a lot of people struggle with, and we've had it the the last time Mr. Dawes, Chris Dawes, came onto the show. He yeah. very much talked um, about how you know it was, he'd come on once and he was talking about going in one direction, yeah. And then he decided that he was going into a different direction. Um, and I think we all just struggle for what we really want out of life, and. Sometimes we then decide to do something because we're pushing ourselves and sometimes we realise that that isn't the way and all the rest of it. And I just, I think Veronica has really found a good way of dealing with life, basically, which is just... Yeah. And do you know what? what a massive, to massive thank you to her. Because she was in a different country and a different time zone, she got up ridiculously early to come and chat with me and Jess. Yeah. She so did. thank you, Veronica. And yeah, the... the Something that I know me and Jesse both fell in love with Veronica for is that her life change and the way that she changed looking at everything, it was all sparked by her wanting to see a certain band. Yeah. And that just resonated for us because yeah. the amount of times in proper jobs we've gone, actually, no, <laughs> yeah. no, no, you don't understand. Yeah. You've got to do this. And yeah, that's why I'm self employed. <laughs> it's all right for some, isn't it? Well, yeah. Join us. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on before I get into trouble. Um, next, so two weeks ago, we had Andrew Bradley. Now, Andrew is the other half of Fran, who was on the show a little while back. Um, Fran was absolutely amazing and awesome. Andrew came onto the show. It was the first time I ever met him was when we recorded the interview, and he wanted to talk to us about sleep. Now, Andrew has made some changes in my life come about. Really? Yeah. Um, something that he said that really hit me was people don't realize how dehydrated they are when they get up in the morning because, you know, just the breathing and sleeping cycle means you, you, you're getting rid of a lot of excess moisture during the night. And he said, you know, if the one thing you can change is have a glass of water or covered water ready for you to drink in the morning, and I've done that. Oh, cool. Um, to be honest, yeah. it's something that um, quite a lot of people who does from different types of background life and, and things. So I know um, I used to do yoga um, and the yoga instructor always said, you know, if you can get, have a glass of water in the morning, that's a great thing to do. And I've had, had a Kung Fu teacher say the same thing. You know, I think people generally, depending on what, where they're coming from, whether it's, just generally feeling good and well-being, or like Andrew comes on from it from a more scientific background. Um, I think it's really good um, as something to as something to do. So yeah, well, and I've, for... I've made the, the water thing. So one of my weird things is I I don't like leaving drinks uncovered for too long because I, I worry that well I've got pets and stuff like that. Mm. So dog hairs in drink, not nice. <laughs> but yeah, but um, cat has made sure that I've got coverable cups yeah and that just sits next to me at night 
Um, if I do need a slurp of drink in the night, I just have some nice clean water, and then in the morning, I normally down the whole glass. Yeah. Um, and it's a massive glasses I've got as well, so it's like half a litre done in straight away. And what I'm finding weirdly is it's making it easier for me to drink more during the day as well. I don't know why. I think my body kind of goes, oh, I like that. Yeah. I'm doing that. Um, so, so I'm actually feeling a lot better for that. And the consistency of sleep thing that Andrew talked about as well, I'm trying to go to bed um, by midnight each night. Right. Now, I know when I was talking with Andrew, he said that he goes to sleep a lot earlier than I do and gets up a lot earlier. Yeah. But I'm never going to be that person. No, no. So for me, getting up at about half seven or eight, that's awesome. That's yeah. amazing. That's, that's more than early enough for me. Um, and yeah, it's been working, apart from a couple of nights where me and you have had random chats at three in the morning. Well, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, we're all always going to be night owls and yeah. we're always going to have those things and we both work in in jobs where we have to work late nights and therefore you have to come recover from that come down of all the um, yeah. adrenaline of whatever it is that you're doing. So I think in reality, it's but it's good to be mindful of it at least. And, yeah. and I, what, what I really liked about Andrew was... Very often when you hear about anything, I mean, you hear about it with diet a little bit as well, but whenever I normally hear somebody talk about sleep, it's always, you've got to do this and you've got to do that and you've got to do, you know, you've got to have this many hours sleep. Everyone should have eight hours. Why do I, why aren't you? Yeah. Uh, and then the, and then a new th- study comes out and, you know, this is the way people look at it is, oh, there's a new study out and... And it says, actually, we need to be having eight and a half hours sleep. And people talk about their circadian rhythms and all this sort of stuff. And that's important, but they're all, everyone's different. And actually, I really like that Andrew, um, (coughs) excuse me, Andy basically just looked at the, said, you know, you have to look at the individual. And that's it. He's, He's stuck when he was, when it was an interview with me. He started aiming at what's good for you, Paul. Yeah. You know, I can't advise everyone that's listening because I'm not in front of them. Yeah. What's good for you? And and even during those conversations, he'd quite often say, look, if there's somebody listening, this might not be the right advice for them. Yeah. But please come talk. And I know he does a lot of corporate work, so I'm really pleased because that he has that mindset because it's very easy for you to get like for people to go into training day type things yeah. in a corporate world and you go, this doesn't resonate with me at all. Yeah. And you end up teaching a thousand people, but actually it only hits home with 20 of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Andrew. It was a great show, mate. And it has made a difference already. Yeah. Appreciate it. Um, and then last week we had my mate, Claire Butcher. Yeah. So I've known Claire for a long time. Um, she probably could have told Jesse quite a few stories about me, but she didn't. <laughs> she was How good. much did you pay her? <laughs> probably not enough, whatever it was, to be honest with you. That's fine. I got on with Claire because we both love a, we both love a spreadsheet. You both geeked out on spreadsheets, didn't you? Yeah. Even when she started talking about spreadsheets, I saw you in the green room going, oh, spreadsheets. <laughs> it's like, no, no, ex-accountant who doesn't care about spreadsheets anymore. No, no, no. So yeah, um, Claire, j- d- very different lady. Love the way she sees things. Love the way she looks at life. Love the way that her business has transformed over the years. Yeah. And, and yeah, what a lady. Absolutely spot on. Um, and actually, I'm seeing Claire in the morning that this show goes out. Cool. So Claire, if you haven't heard this, I'll know. Well done, mate. That was awesome. <laughs> um, what else has happened? Oh, in the last four in the last four weeks, I need to tell the listeners. I think this is this is semi important. I got older. <laughs> he like did, it. ladies and gentlemen, because he cannot see a thing. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, since that birthday mate of mine got worse. Going back to the eye. What's the eye shop called? Yeah. Do? The... Should have gone to the opticians. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll go to the opticians and see if I can sort my eyes out. Yeah. Weird. It's weird. Only if you can find a way there. <clears throat> I'm going to get someone without a license to drive. It's safer. <laughs> I'll give the keys to my daughter. Ladies and gentlemen, that was indeed a joke. That was a joke. Um, For any of my police friends listening, that was a joke. 
<laughs> they don't listen. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> and they know I'd do it. So <laughs> talking of um of police and security and safety and stuff. Oh, all that all that cyber security type stuff. Is that yeah. where you're going to? Well, I I was going to say because we, we often in these shows talk about um what we've been up to, but I think we could probably kill two birds with one stone on, on that. In we particular. had an awesome day. Well, I did. We did. So, shall I press the jingle button? Yeah, what? Well, we're going to use the Nuggeteer jingle. Yeah. Go, Jesse, go! It's time for the Nuggeteer of the Week. Great. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> That'll make two people really happy. <laughs> There are two specific people that wait for that jingle, and I know who they are. Good to see you guys. Hope you're all right. Hi. Um, yeah, so Nuggeteer of the Week. We, we've we had a weird day today. So uh, we're recording this on Monday, and the show goes out in two days' time. And I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to Lucy and Bash. Now, she uh, hosted BBC Radio Solon today, and they invited me in this afternoon to talk all things mental theft. And we had a great chat. And and it was, do you know what? It felt so nice. It felt so relaxed. And she's an awesome host. Now, I'll probably get told off by Lou because it was Lou's show. And, and Lucy had to step in and look after it because <laughs> Lou was ill. But Lucy was awesome. Yeah. Wasn't she? She really was good. lovely. Lovely lady. I felt really relaxed, really comfortable. She just asked me stuff. And, and hopefully it was helpful. Yeah. What did you think of the show? Um, I thought it was really good. I, I loved it because... Um, I know it's quite difficult working. Um, well, we know what it's like getting guests in. It's yeah. quite difficult to get people in that, you know, it doesn't matter how much of an expert they are or what it is that they're trying to do. It doesn't necessarily mean that they can easily find it comfortable to talk about stuff. Yeah. And most people can do it. It's just whether you, like Paul, one of Paul's very good skills is as an interviewer getting people feeling comfortable and relaxed and chatting and that's why we like the format of the show so you know for pe- we do get people saying that Newton's Nuggets isn't businessy enough <laughs> and it's a little bit too relaxed and fun for a serious business and that but that's kind of on purpose isn't it at the end of the day yeah. one that's hopefully for the people who do like it it's a bit easier to listen to and secondly, it's partly because it makes it a hell of a lot easier for people to come in and be interviewed because, yeah. you know, you've got lots of great people that come into the show, spend their time with us, but they don't necessarily, you know, they're not broadcasters. They're not used to it. I mean, <laughs> not really. No, make it <laughs> but, up as we go. But the, um, yeah, so, uh, and, but, you know, I, I might have listened to a little bit of early nuggets and thought, God, the state of that. Yeah, and there is a, there are a few YouTube videos out there that I did way back before Newton's Nuggets. I thought, God, that this is awful. And people are probably listening th- still think that probably. But either way, <laughs> the um, but because we do it every week, there's a le- certain level of practice and not everybody gets that opportunity. So, you know, I, that's exactly what they had with uh, the radio. Like the, Everybody kept walking in and out of the studio at different points going, God, he's really good, isn't he? God, oh, he's natural on the you. radio. So, you know. Oh, it's that um, um, Kate who came in to do the social media stuff. <laughs> yes. That was funny. Paul, could you possibly do a video saying roughly this, this and this? Yes. Where's the camera? <laughs> <laughs> and do you want to hold the camera? Do you want me to hold the camera? And she went, well, you can hold it if you want. Awesome. Done. Uh, filmed this thing, gave it back to her and went, is that okay? And she was like, that was one take. That was fine. Yeah. I'll leave now. <laughs> and she literally walked out from the room you were in to the room I was in and just walked through and went, God, sometimes my job's really easy. I didn't Did have to she? do a thing and then just walked <laughs> off. <laughs> we like that. We, we do like, like that a lot. So to everyone that was involved in that, to Kate, who came in the social media, to Russell, who booked me and got me onto the show, to Justine, who made sure we were happy, comfy, and made sure we were watered, and to Lucy, who hosted it, and to Lou, whose show it is, and you should have been there, I'm sorry. Yeah. You lot were awesome, <laughs> all of you. But you uh, as Lucy did the, uh, the, the... The dealing with me bit. Dealing with poorly bit, mostly. Um we, we wanted to make you Nuggeteer of the Week. Nuggeteer of the Week. 
Talking of which, talking of the jingle, yeah. um, while we're here, I also wanted to do a little... Sorry, I can't believe I just sung that while it was recording. <laughs> <laughs> I can. Um, and I'm not going to edit it out, however oh, much you pay me. Um, so Is there a rush it? Ooh. This changes everything. <laughs> um, while we're here and talking about the jingle, which was done by a, a special someone called Tony, who... Um, it's lovely. It's a lovely bloke. It's awesome. He's an IT... Guru. No, or genius was... Don't, don't use the G, that G word around me. He's an IT genius. He's he's great at offering IT services to people all around the South Coast, based out of Winchester area, I yeah. think. But more than that, I think partly because of me talking to us and, and stuff like that, I, either way, even if it's got nothing to do with us, we are taking credit... Um, Tony I'm has used to that. I do that a lot. Yeah, yeah. Tony, Tony has a his own podcast called the IT Smart Guy podcast, which I actually listen to and it's great. And we've talked about it on the show. He's before. done really well with it. He it? has done really well, um, and yeah, I really liked it. I, I, I like he he went on a little sweary rant on the last episode, which was really funny. Um, it was it was genuinely serious, but I also liked it because it's so unexpected. Because he's such a sweet, nice yeah, guy. Yeah, he's such a lovely. Guy. <laughs> Something I like is uh, on one of the recent ones I listened to. He had a moment of a coughing fit, right? And so he was talking about something quite serious. Then he had a bit of a coughing fit, and then he just went, "I am so sorry. I'll carry on." And did, <laughs> and it just made it so smooth. I was just like, "Yeah, I'm so Tony. That's good." <laughs> See, Tony would be really good at lives and things like that. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the podcast is great, and he gave us a little shout out um, in his last episode. Um, I am going to disagree with your favourite episodes. Yeah, because because uh, at a certain moment he just put up on screen. He didn't say which episodes are his favourite mm-hmm. verbally, but he put it up on screen. And and I think the first one he mentioned was episode eighty four. He can go off someone, you know, Tony. Episode eighty four. You can go off someone, you know, Paulie. Episode eighty four. And there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That was the moment. Pushed it too far. This is the last nuggets you will ever hear. <laughs> if this even goes out. <laughs> <laughs> it'd just be a scream just with no. <laughs> just uh, the, the beep. <laughs> anyway, I might edit that in. Um, <laughs> I said I work for to do that. Yeah, no, sod it. Um, so, yes, yeah, so thank you very much, Tony, for being one of our biggest supporters and being a good friend and also for giving us that shout out. That means a lot. Yeah. Tony, you're awesome, dude. You're awesome. Right. Have we done everything? Um, Everything. One, I'm going to say three last things. One, the first one is you're going to start with the most important part of Newton's Nuggets. Oh, the nugget itself. (laughs) Well done, Paul. Mate, I, I really just had a moment of, there's an important bit. <laughs> well, what you should also know, ladies and gentlemen, is that we discussed this in detail before the show. Literally just because, before. Because it's Paul's nugget this week. Right. My nugget this week is, be honest from the outset. If you're in any kind of negotiation, any kind of sales-driven tactic, please be honest. Now, I'm going to say this because... Uh, a lot of you know that now most of my work is speaking at various events around the place. I enjoy it. I love it. It's part of the work. Uh, I charge for it. If I get paid for that, we can do all the other stuff for free to help people. That's it. Okay. Got contacted by a company saying, we really want you to speak at this massive expo uh, up in Oxford. We can do this. We can do that. We can do the other. And I said, brilliant. Do you want me to check the date? Yeah, check the date. Check the date. Um, I then said, right, the price for doing that kind of thing is this. And they went, oh, No. No, you have to pay us £5,000 to appear on stage. Um, I then said that my fee was my fee plus expenses, so I'd be adding their five grand on top. They didn't go for it. Um, the fact is, if they'd been honest and upfront straight away with all of it, I, I would have been so much happier with the, thanks a lot, but that's not for me. Um, just be honest. It's an interesting one because I think, I mean, prices are, prime example but it, it, honesty with all of these things is always a good thing um but pricing is one of those big ones because people want to gatekeep that information yeah and they think well we're going to sell you all the value first before we even give you the price and which is fine in some respects but like 
if you're running a business properly, then you probably have a budget. So I've had this recently where we had multiple cold calls and eventually someone in my organization said yes to a meeting. So several of us had to sit in the meeting. Very, very good presentation. The salesperson was excellent. I can't, can't deny that they were excellent. And through all of this, even after a couple of jokes about the fact that nobody's ever told us how much any of the services that they were selling were going to cost, I got to right at the end of a meeting and they then went, right, here's the price card. Now, in reality, I thought the price was reasonable. Okay. And I checked and actually compared to if, because they were doing it in a very specific way, if I did it in what I would call a traditional way of what the they, services they were selling, it was comparable price-wise. Okay, fair enough. And and they immediately they wanted to get the order on the day and then they were phoning up afterwards and talking about price, 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 price at that point. And realistically, we never had the budget for it. The business has a budget. But this is... We, uh, we, we know how much money we have to spend as a business. Yeah. We know how much... And now sometimes, obviously, you can be a bit flexible on these things. But realistically, a budget, business has a budget because you've got to make sure that the book's balance at the end of the year. Yeah. And so, you know, there's no point just... If, if we didn't have a budget and we could just spend what we wanted, then, you know, marketing would happily spend hundreds of thousands of pounds. We could spend... We literally physically could spend millions of pounds yeah. on marketing for a company that only turns over a few million quid. So... Right, this this gets me on advertising things as well, because I still get quite a few few companies. Uh, I won't say who they are, but they'll approach me and say, "We want to put your your services in this magazine. It goes to yeah. one of these business owners. Does this? Does that?" And I, and and I can't say how much. How much is it? How much is it? How much is it? How much is it? And then by the time that they've just annoyed me, yeah, and I'm thinking, I now don't care. I'm not buying this. Yeah. Okay. They then go, and we can guarantee you'll get this much work from it. For only ten thousand pounds, for example, right? Yeah. Set number one, I haven't got ten grand in the bank to do that. Yeah. Okay, not happening. Set number two, I then come back with brilliant. If you're sure it can guarantee me all of that work, what we'll do is I'll say yes, I'll give you nothing and I'll give you ten percent of all of my fees. Yeah. Because that'll be worth more than the ten grand because of the work that you're saying this is definitely gonna guarantee. Yeah. Then they go, Oh, we can't do that. Well, why not? You've just told me it's a definite. Yeah. Surely you're safe and secure in this, right? Yeah, they won't sign on a document that says it's definitely. No. no. So, yeah, be honest from the outset. That's Paulie's nugget for today. Oh, oh, and a little one. Men, just so you know, ladies are allowed to buy you flowers because it does make you feel happy. <laughs> Get your flowers out for those who are watching the video. For those on audio, sorry about all the rustling. Russell, flowers. <laughs> The flowers called Russell now. That's what it sounded like. That. I think they're called tulips. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Um, please help me get away from this man. Do you go want to, to the show while I look? Go at the to newtonsnuggets.com and buy some merch. Uh, I can afford to kick this guy to the curb or something. Can we, can we have flowers in the merch? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gents, we'll see you next week. And then. Also, Paulie's forgetting that we have now agreed a date for a certain something that's happening. We had an advert for that. No, we didn't. Didn't we? No. Didn't that go? No, no you did the advert for the radio show that just went out. You never did an did advert, advert for the, for the radio th- show. That's a good point. You didn't do an advert for the thing. Yeah. So if I do this one now, we could use it as an advert for the thing. No. We'll no? do that separately. April 19th, 2023. <laughs> We are putting on Mental Theft Day. What it's going to be is a festival of a day all based online to help you guys with your security. Whether you're a person who's worried about their savings at home, whether you're a small to medium business who's worried about growing and people trying to absolutely scam you while you're growing, whether you're a massive corporate and you're worried about your people in the employment sector, getting the right ideas, getting the right ways to look after themselves and your business. Doesn't matter, whoever you are, we're putting this on and we're trying to make it free of charge. So attendance, completely free. 
If you want any more information about it and you want to read some detail that Jesse will put up because I'm rubbish at it, go to mentaltheft.co.uk. Have a look. Come join us. It'll be a bit of fun. You'll learn something too. And if you want any of my hair, it will all be pulled out by mid-April. At least, yeah. Yeah. I, I reckon yeah, that'll probably be available. Then you can be as bald as me <laughs> mid-March. <laughs> what was the third thing? What was the third thing? No, I said two. You said two? No, you said two. Yeah, but one of them was a nugget. Nugget? You Mental Theft Day. Merch. Merch. I so we did that. three? Yeah. Okay. Should we say goodbye now? Bye now. Bye now. Goodbye now. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching. Now, if you want to subscribe, it should be up there. If you want to see more of Newton's Nuggets, they're down there. If you want to see more about mental theft stuff, that should be down there somewhere. And the business speaking stuff should be up there. Thank you very much. Speak to you all soon. Bye-bye.